If you're working with the DIYsurfboardkits.com complete kit, you will receive a surfboard in flat pack form. Now, in that kit, you get several sheets of six millimeter thick by 300 millimeter wide polonia, which you are to use for your surfboard skins, as well as your rails. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on working with thin stock and getting it glued up into the desired panels. So whether that be 600 millimeters or 900 millimeters wide. And basically we're gonna go over a few methods in which we can join these together and give you some hints and tips for working with thin stock. If this is your first time working with thin stock, be prepared to get freaked out about things moving around. Thin stock will not stay flat. So you may receive your surfboard skins and they might have a bit of a bow to it. That's normal, there is no way to avoid it, but there is workarounds to make it easy to work with. And that's what we're gonna cover here. Now we're gonna go over two methods. One method which has a dependency on clamps and it is the recommended method because you're able to get tighter joints this way. And the other method is one which doesn't rely on clamps at all. Now thin stock, as you can see, doesn't stay that flat. And that's not an issue at all because this wood is so malleable that we can actually squeeze it together and force these joints together without any further edge treatment. And that goes for short lengths like this all the way up to three meter long lengths. So the first thing that we're going to do is do a dry run to make sure that our clamping strategy works. So we've got our boards lined up as we intend them to be glued. We've got some coals to keep things flat. Now we're using rollers just because we use this a lot, but you don't need to have rollers at all. You could just use a flat piece of wood and put some tape over it so that glue can't stick. And we're doing this every 300 mil. We have some small clamps, and these clamps are what we use to hold the coals down to our cross pieces of our bench. If you're doing this on a flat bench, you would just do it on the edge of your bench, obviously. So we'll do that on basically every section. You may run into the issue of not having enough clamps for your coals. Well, that's where this bench is really useful because it gives us some options of just using rope to hold these rollers down nice and firm or something as simple as a cable tie. So you can just link some cable ties together and just wrap it around the ends. So now everything is nice and flat. We can just test it with a couple of clamps. There it is. So that's the dry run. We know that it works, everything's nice and flat, nothing's popping away, and more, most importantly is our glue seam has no gaps. So with the dry assembly done, now I'm just gonna undo this, add some glue to that line, clamp it back together, and let that dry. Here we just apply a thin bead of glue. So here I'm using Tight Bond 3, which is their exterior grade, water resistant, glue, which is kind of the ideal solution. Of course, you could use polyurethane here as well. It's just a thin amount. We can apply our first pole. And here you can see, we've got nice even squeeze out across the entire seam. And as we run our fingers across it, there's no ridge. So there it is, absolutely no preparation on these panels at all for gluing. And we have a perfect glue seam without any buckling, bowing or anything like that. Now for us, we have this big clamp press, which is doing the exact same thing, just all self-contained. So we lay our boards up on here. We have those same rollers, which index in and get locked which holds the panels flat. Then all we have to do is crank down on these clamp handles and walk away once the glue is drying. Okay, now our alternative method doesn't rely on any clamps. It only relies on tape. Now, this is a really common method for joining together veneer and things like that. However, when it comes to this slightly thicker material, which is about six mil, there is a few things that we have to be concerned about and that is how well our glue up, our glue line actually matches together 
naturally. So what we do need to do is just treat this edge so that the seams match together perfectly. And to do that, we can use a hand plane. And here we can see that it's actually pretty close. It's more just we've got a few little bits on the edge which have kind of torn away. So all we have to do here is fold the boards up on each other like that. Get the edges pretty much lined up perfectly. And then with a hand plane, in this case, I'm just using a block plane. We can come across and just take a shaving until we're getting an even shaving across both those boards. Now don't be too concerned about your angle. If you're not dead on 90, it doesn't matter because the way that we folded these boards on each other means when we open up, the two angles are gonna be complementary to each other and meet together perfectly anyway. Now for this, the longer the length of your plane, the better because it means that it's gonna keep the things straighter. So if you've got like a number five or a number seven, that's kind of the, the ideal option here because what that will do is keep things straight. But I do realize that not everyone will have access to a whole array of block planes, uh, of hand planes, but a block plane is pretty affordable. So if you have a look at your glue line here and you see that like we do, we have a slight, slightly larger gap in the middle, then you know what you will wanna do is just come up and take a few more passes at either end. So avoid the middle, and just take one, two at this end, one, two at that end, check the seam, and to me, that seam is pretty much spot on. It's got a very slight, slight hairline there, but to me, that really doesn't matter. So once your glue line is mating together nice and tight, we have to apply some tape to hold this joint together. So the first step is to go across the joints and as we apply that tape, you kind of pull it to get tension on it. And we do that every 250, 300 mils. So, you know, 10 or 12 inches. And then you just run one down the seam like that and just press everything in firmly. So, now this is pulling the joint together and just keeping everything masked off from squeeze out. Now we're doing two boards here. If you had to do it on three, it's the exact same process. You just do it with three boards instead of two. Now once you have your uh, tape staples applied and your seam, you can flip the board over carefully, prop it up just a little bit, get your glue and just apply a bead to that V notch that we've created. Now we can just lay the boards flat and just to hold everything tight again, just apply a few more staples on this side. So here you can see we've got nice even squeeze out. The ridge is pretty much non-existent. We've got a slight ridge here in the middle but that you know, that, that's less than half a mil, so that doesn't matter. And this is a perfectly acceptable method for gluing up your skins. So those are the two methods of gluing up your surfboard skins that we recommend. A clamp table like this is a lot more accurate, but does require more tooling. Whereas the tape method requires about $3 worth of masking tape and a, and a block plan. All right guys, that's all there is to gluing up your surfboard skins. So. Thin stock can be a little bit different to work with, but once you know a few little hints and tricks, it becomes a whole lot easier than anything you've worked with before. Anyway guys, that is it for this video. If you want more Holocourt wooden surfboard building tips and tricks and guides and all the good stuff that goes into it, make sure you subscribe to this channel and uh, stay up to date with everything we're putting out. So click that bell icon and get notified. Now just a reminder that DIYsurfboardkits.com.au is finally live and we are sending our kits out nationally across Australia. And for our international friends, we are able to send the plywood frame kits with one-to-one -one templates. However, because of 
length limitations, we will not be able to provide you with the timber for skinning your boards. So head over to diysurfboardkits.com.au and check out our complete range and maybe even sign up for our newsletter so you get notifications of special deals and coupon codes and all that sort of stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.